Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Ackerman and I am here today to walk you through setting up workshop rotations in Canvas and we're going to do this in a way that it's really uh, user friendly for our primary students. So there's just icons that they click on and um, if they're uh, developing readers, they don't have to dive into the skills too much. Now my challenge is that I want to see if I can do this in 30 minutes or less creating a workshop center rotation set up from scratch um, and walk you guys through it and hopefully uh, you pick up on some tips and tricks along the way. But keep in mind our vision is that is we're using all icons to set up our workshop rotations. Setting the timer for 30 minutes. Gotta make sure my phone is on mute. So um, hopefully I don't get interrupted. Okay. 30 minutes starting now, let's go. Okay, my centers for workshop that I've established are going to be read to self, teachers, uh, the, you know, teacher table, um, technology, and also like analog offline activities that might be work, work, worksheets or whatever it is that um, you want to do with your students. So those are the four different um, centers that students can rotate through in my workshop. Let me share my screen and we'll get started off to the races. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to make my artwork, my icons for these centers. And I've already technically made these, but I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how I how I made them and because I'm doing this from scratch, right? So I'm using a website called Canva to make my, my icons. I go to canva.com and I'm looking, I want my icons to be kind of a square shape because those fit in nicely. Um, Canva has tons of different templates that you can use. Um, I just want something really simple um, and uh, not nothing with very distracting backgrounds. Like, you know, um, this would be way too much. I want something with almost just like a plain solid color background or, um, or just like just slight design. I'm gonna use this one here, I like this. And so I pull up that template and I wanna get rid of these text boxes because I don't, need any of this this text. I'm going to use all icons. So what I'm left with is this kind of back uh, background space. And now I want to look for some icons. In Canva over on the left hand side, there are these elements that you can use that are different icons. And if I search for for technology, I'm thinking it might be nice to have an iPad as my icon. So students know that the activity that they're going to do is um, it's their technology activity on their I, their iPad. So I click on that. Um, I like to make it bigger. So I'm gonna kind of drag it to the corner, drag these corners here. That looks good. There's my icon. I'm going to click download. And then I would, oops, I would click download here. Now, not gonna download it actually because I've already saved it to my iPad here, but this is what it would look like if I click download. It says preparing your design, you can name it whatever you want and then you save it there. Okay, my next icon that I need to make is read to self. So I'm, I'm thinking a book would be good here. I'll type in book for my keyword and I've got all these icons. Just a little tip, these icons in Canva that have a crown with them, you have to buy them. They're really cute, but you, they do require you to pay for them. So I think I'm going to use this book here. I like this one and it's free. So I'm gonna click that. And there's my book icon that I can set for read to self. I need one for, the teacher time, teacher table. So lots of different icons here that I can choose from. Uh, I chose this icon here because it kind of looks like me. So, um, so I would just do that. Oh, whoops, I hadn't gotten rid of my book yet. So delete my book. Can make the teacher icon a little bit bigger. There, center it, download. I would click download, okay. But like I said, I've already made these. 
And then my final one is the analog, the offline activities. And so I'm thinking pencil, paper might be good keywords to use. Yep. And I can easily find um, some artwork that I like here. Some of these have that I really like are pro, which one did I use earlier? That was not pro, this one here, go. So, but if you like the cute ones, you know, feel free to pay for them. You can do that, it's up to you. So then I would download this right here, okay. So I've got my icons that I want to use. I'm ready. I'm done with Canva now. So I can close out of this tab. Saved all these icons to my desktop. They're right here. I'm ready to actually, I'm almost ready to start building in Canva. But there's one thing that I want to do, again, for my students that are in primary, is I want to give them a way of being able to um, see what the time and so I'm actually going to create my own from scratch icons a little bit different for the time. And what I was thinking that I could do for that for these icons is that I could make insert a clock a blank clock face with arrows for the um, for the hands of the clock showing the time for each station. So I'm going to call this a four by four icons box. That's why I'm going to name this file. And I, I'm doing this in Google Slides. So I'm going to change the, the page size of it by going to File. And then I go to Page Setup. And I want to go to Custom here. And I'm going to change this to Pixels. And I'm going to go 500 by 500 to get a nice square there for my clock icon. I'm going to click Insert. And I want to insert a clock face. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. I haven't tested this out. So you guys are seeing this in real time if this is going to work. How much time do I have left right now? Ooh, got 23 minutes still. Okay, clock face. So if I do that, oh my gosh, you guys, look, there is one, there's clock faces here without hands when I do an image search. So I'm going to click uh, one of these clock faces to help my students. I think this one, oh, this one's colorful. This looks nice. You can click insert. And I can make that a little bit bigger like this. OK, now to make my clock hands, I'm going to click um, insert shape. I'm going to make an arrow, OK? And let's just say that my workshop time is at um, one, it start, like it starts at one o'clock, okay? So what I'm gonna do is make this arrow. I think I want the arrow to just be plain black. So I click the fill color is plain black. We'll get rid of that outside line. Can make it a little skinnier if I want. Okay, so we're gonna say it's gonna be uh, the shorthand Make this a little bit shorter and see how I'm just like playing around with this and I'm going to point it at one o'clock. Okay, and then I'm going to just copy that arrow and make another one and I'm going to rotate that up to my 12. And make it longer. And there is my 12 o'clock. So there I've got a one o'clock and I'm going to go ahead and insert like a circle shape for the middle of my clock. Circle there. And I think we need to give that a fun color. So we'll give that, we'll make it yellow. Outline. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So there's my one o'clock. Now I'm going to make a copy of this. And all I do to make a copy of that is I go to slide, duplicate slide. And for the next one, for the next center rotation, we'll say that I'm rotating every um, 15 minutes. I'm gonna turn this so that it points that way. And now my long hand is pointing at the three. 
and we'll make that go just a little bit that way. Okay. And then I go slide, duplicate slide. And now I'm going to make this hand go down to the six. Like this. It's looking a little crazy. Okay. And then we'll make that go this way, halfway in between the one and the two. You guys are watching this in real time. Okay, now I've got 130 and our final one, I'm gonna move this to the nine. If you're perfe perfectionist and I'm driving you crazy right now, well, I'm under a time crunch, so there you go. Right now we're getting closer to the two. And I'm doing this because, you know, we just want our kids immersed in learning all the time. So these clock icons will be nice to have with our, our station rotations. And the only thing when I look at this that I don't like love is the fact that they are, um, that they're kind of big. And I also don't like this gray background. I don't want, I don't really want that gray background there. So, um, I'm thinking about how I could deal with that. Um, but, you know, actually, I think it, I think it might actually look good. Honestly, we'll try it. And then if I don't like it, I can always fix it later. So, okay. So now what I want to do is I need to save each one of these clock faces that I made here. I need to save them as PNG files. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go file and I'm going to go uh, download as and I'm going to click PNG and I'm going to call this 1, 1 p.m. clock. And then I go to the next slide and I go download PNG. 1 15 clock. And then I go 30 clock. And then I go. Now I've got all my clocks. So I have my clocks and I have my icons and I'm ready to set up my Canvas page. So I'm going to create a new page in my course. And I get a little sip of coffee too. Hmm. That's not what I wanted to do. Click new page. Okay, and I'm gonna call this workshop. Okay, and I'm here and I'm in the rich text editor. And what I need to do is I wanna set up a table with columns for each time slot. And um, because there's four different times um, and then there's also four different activities. So I need to make a table where, let's see, I'm gonna go insert table, one, two, three, four, so those are gonna be my clock faces. And then I'm gonna have um, a table that has um, like the, uh, where I write out the times also, and then, and, or, and, um, and the groups, right? And then I'm gonna have one, two, three, four um, icons like this. Let's see. We'll try it this way. And if I don't like it, I might do something different. Um, I always like to center everything. So I highlight all of this and then I click center. Okay, now I'm going to insert my images of my clocks. So I come over here, that's my one o'clock. And I click submit. Go oh, here's this one. I click insert upload image. It's my 115. 
right here. I'm going to click insert my media. It's 1.30. And then here we've got insert clock right there. I like it. So now if I wanted to, I could also type one o'clock this way. Students are still learning their times. They can see that. Do you have to do clocks? No. You could also just call it rotation one, rotation two, rotation three. Um, that's up to you. Okay, in my next column here, I'm going to say, um, hmm, you know what? I just realized something that I needed to do. I need to actually have a column off to the left side to so, show which group is doing which thing. So I'm going to insert a column by clicking on this button right here, insert column before. Is that gonna mess up all this? Ooh, I think it might. Oh, darn. Okay, I'm gonna, you guys, I'm gonna start over. But I knew that this was gonna happen. Okay, I'm still, how many minutes do I have? I have less than 15 minutes. Okay, it's okay. Click insert table. One, two, three, four, five. I need five. One, two, three, four. Down that way. Okay, great. So here we're going to put our clock. In. And submit. Go quick. <laughs> This is where I'm like, ooh, I'm in the weeds. Am I going to be able to get it done? I can, I can get this done. I think I can. Even with making mistakes. Okay. Put the times in. One. You remember earlier I had centered everything and this time I didn't and that bothers me. I like things, I like the text to be centered. So I'm going to fix, that's one thing I'm going to fix is um, all and I'll center all of this. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll center it. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. And then here, you know, I just realized I don't have an icon or anything for my different groups and what the group names are going to be. So maybe that's something else I still need to come up with our icons for that. And we can do that here in a second. But for the purposes of setting up the icons on the table that we made in Canva, that's going to be the same process as it was for these clocks. I'm going to click insert here and I click my image upload image and then I'm going to click read the oh that just happened oh I'm going to click this drag it in there submit there we go okay and then for their next rotation they're going to have teacher table. And for their next rotation, practice pages. And I'm missing one of those. Let's see. over here. So for this last one, which one do I have? Oh, the technology. Okay. 
So for my last center, I'm going to click upload image. I actually have to go to my desktop for this. So it's not in my quick menu. And there. Okay. So now what I've got is I've got my first rotation right here. So we've got read to self, teacher, um, analog activities, iPad. And then underneath it, I'm going to do the same icons, but I'm just going to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to click insert. And we'll go, they get technology first. And my dog is barking. So, of course. And. I think the next one is the read to self. So you just want to make sure that you've got your schedule. So, you know, everything's rotating through, right? And the next one is teacher table. And finally is the analog activities. Okay, and our next rotation will start with the, um, ooh, what's, yeah, what do we start with next? We've got book, iPad. So the next rotation will start with the teacher. Okay. Ages. And here we'll go iPad. How much time do I have? Oh, I have eight minutes. Okay. And then <laughs> Finally, we go a uh, book. We need a book. Okay. And last, we're going to go. So, what do we have so far? Book, iPad, teacher. So, we need analog here. teacher, book, so we need technology here. And here we've got analog, teacher, iPad, and a book here. We're almost there, home stretch. And then finally, we need, we've got iPad, analog, book, teacher. Okay, that's fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and do a save just because I've got my, uh, my template here. And this is what it looks like right now, okay? It's not quite done. We've got a few tweaks to make, okay? So this first cell here, I might type some, this might be a place where I type some directions or um, if I have like a link to our curriculum resource, I could put that there. Here I'm going, I need to indicate which um, group this is. So this is gonna be group one. And then I'm also going to, I think, sh uh, color this, this cell in here. So maybe I'll just color code my groups and that would um, help. Now there's a way to um, color this. There we go. 
Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I want to format my cell properties. I knew what I was looking for. Can this one's going to be called group two, two, and I come over here to see I'm my table, table properties, advanced, background color, say that they're orange. Okay, this one, table, table properties, advanced, background color blue. Oh, why is it? <gasps> oh, you know what? That's what I want it to. I just, I only want to color this one cell. So let's try it again. Don't give up. Oh, it's still cover colored everything. I'm just pressing the back button. Well, let's see. Um, I think for some reason when I highlight, when I click on just this cell, it highlights the entire, um, the entire table. So I'll have to play around with that. Okay, group two, group three, I can let it go for now. I can be okay <laughs> for the sake of time. Sometimes we have to do that just for the sake of time, just like be okay. All right, so, and I've got, I've got all those nice and centered, but I think I maybe would like at least, at least for, the, for that text to be bigger. So I'm gonna click format and uh, go to, let's see, so, no, we'll go here, size. You can make that like that. And then I could change the color of my font. I could go orange. That at least gives us some color coding for the kids who are developing readers that you could use if you're having trouble messing with those. Um, so. so there, so that's how you do that. And let's see, I've got three minutes left. Okay, perfect. So the last thing that I need to do to, to formulate this is to hyperlink to my activities, okay? Now, if it's technology, you might be linking that to a web page. You might be linking that to um, a list of options like on another page, but you the only things you have to hyperlink on your workshop rotations are your technology icons. Those are the only things that you're linking to anything. Everything else is assuming that you're doing those activities in person. Now, if you're teaching remotely because, you know, COVID or for, uh, for or maybe you're a remote classroom, then in that circumstance, you could take your teacher icon and you could make that a link to your video meeting space. You could also like for the pencil paper, let's say that that was like um, a PDF activity that you're wanting them to annotate or a work workbook page. Um, however, you're pushing that out, that could be a link to Seesaw um, or it could be a link to um, like uh, just to the PDF itself that you've got saved to your Google Drive or something like that. So um, for the books, that could be um, a link, you could link it to um, some resources for how to get ebooks if you're remote. But otherwise, you're just in person teaching your students that the book means read to self time, the teacher means come back to teacher table, the, um, th this icon here means that's your, your workbook or other activities that you're doing on pencil and paper. Um, and the, this icon is those are that's your apps that you're using or or different other online activities that you set up. So let's save and publish and see what it looks like. Here's what it looks like. 
you've got your times, you've got your icons, and yo, 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 I have one minute left, and I did it. I'm so excited right now that we set up workshop centers from scratch in less than 30 minutes. You can do it too, okay? Um, and you can make it look, you know, fit your, your look that you like. Um, but hopefully this helped you do that. And thank you to the teachers at CanvasCon for the inspiration. Um, this just makes a lot of sense for our emergent readers and helping them know what to do. Thank you so much.